Another great day to be a no, as is every day, is a great day to be a no. Um, I can't tell you how excited we are to, to get this leadership in our program. You know, in our world, we talk about this often, uh, that our coach that we have leading our programs, they're, they're more than that. They're great leaders, they're teachers, and, and coaches that are joining us, sometimes you know your counselors as well. And we've discussed and acknowledged that the student athlete experience is the most important thing that we do here at Florida State. And we have the weighty responsibility of assuring that the community, that the individuals leading our programs are of high character. Taking qualities from our soccer student athletes when we met with them to talk about the qualities they were looking for in a new head coach. We set out to recruit, to hire, and more importantly, partner with a coach of certain qualities and expectations. Our coaches are responsible for supporting the mission and core values of the department and the university. We were looking for someone who recruits individuals that have exhibited high potential to perform in the classroom, in the community, and of course on the pitch. Someone who reinforces academic achievement and understands that graduation is the top priority at Florida State University. A coach that prepares diligently, competes aggressively to fill teams to win championships. A coach that acknowledged that the logo was always on, models professional behavior, represents the university in its high standards, leads by example, and is an excellent role model. When we look at all of our coaches, they exhibit these traits. A coach that engages the community to sell the department and the program. With all of our great tradition, starting with the first College Cup in 2003, we have found the only coach that has won an ACC, an SEC, and also been National Coach of the Year. 2021 SEC Coach of the Year after leading Tennessee to the SEC Tournament Championship led Tennessee program to a 20-3 and record last year, named 2021 Southeast Region Coaching Staff of the Year, won back-to-back -back SEC Eastern titles 2020 and 2021. All of this success with a team GPA of 3.7. Also had the sixth best, best recruiting class in the country. And coach, I'm not gonna lie, you have great qualities and unbelievable success but when you get to meet Abby and when she comes to Tallahassee she was the real closer on this deal join me please in welcoming our new soccer coach here at Florida State University Brian Pinsky thank you everyone um, <laughs> this is what happens when you're short. <laughs> Drop the mic, I heard that. I think we are good. Uh, thank you everyone um, for being here today. Um, it is uh, obviously quite an honor to be standing in front of everybody here at Florida State University. And thank you um, in particular to the head coaches that have made it here um, to be with us and to, to celebrate um, this special day uh, with me. Um, thank you to Cindy and Jim and uh, Michael for entrusting the best program in women's college soccer with me. Um, I, don't, I don't take that um, lightly. Um, I uh, take it with humility. Um, I'm a humble guy, um, but uh, I am honored and excited um, to take over, um, like I said, the, the, the best program over, certainly over the last 10 years and very arguably over the last 17 years um, in women's college soccer. Michael just mentioned Abby. Um, Abby's at home um, preparing our house for sale, helping our son Ben um, prepare for his high school graduation and my son Will is uh, finishing his sophomore year at Tulane and then uh, my daughter Allie is uh, finishing her sophomore year, yes, twins at uh, App State. Um, obviously, it's, it's, it's not easy to be the family members of a coach, right? Starting with a wife or be it a husband, right? It's not easy. It's a long road. Um, 
a um, lot of sleepless nights, a lot of great nights, a lot of really tough nights, a lot of travel, all of it. And then it's tough to be the kids of a coach. Um, and uh, certainly takes a village uh, to be great. And uh, my family, my wife, my kids, um, uh, my, when, when, when I got my first head coaching job, my twins were three, and my little one was one. And now here they are, 20 and 18. Um, when I went to Tennessee 10 years ago, my, my goal was to, to win championships and be, um, do the best I could for the University of Tennessee. But I also wanted to stay there through my kids' high school graduation. And I almost made it as Ben graduates in about eight days. Um, thank you to, as I look back and think about Tennessee, right, this was, and honestly, Michael, as you're reading off those numbers and st statistics from this fall, um, I think about that team that I just left. Um, I did so with a very heavy heart. I think about those kids, those, the, the coaches that I left. Um, that's my family. Uh, that's my second family. Um, Joe Kurt, who just has taken over as the head coach, I'm so happy and, and, and for him that they get to continue on there. That's what they wanted. Um, Joe's going to do a phenomenal job. John Morgan um, will remain as his assistant, and Hemant Sharma as, as the volunteer, I believe. Um, and then the players there. Um, I said it to somebody er earlier today, and uh, I really believe this. Um, I'm stealing a quote, but I, I will give him credit. Gino Ariema, right? He's got a phrase. Um, there are two types of coaches, coaches of ex-players, sorry, coaches of great players and ex-coaches. And it's very true, right? And I just left a lot of great players at Tennessee, right? And what they've done for me and, and my family, um, I'm forever grateful to all of them, right? And I look forward to following their success as they're going to have another phenomenal fall um, um, this year. Um, Michael mentioned the first Final Four in 2003. So I'd be remiss not to give Patrick Baker a shout out in this talk, right? He got it going. He really did. Um, took them to their fi first Final Four in 2003 and did a phenomenal job before moving on to, to uh, the SEC. Um, and, then, and then Mark, you know, what Mark and Mike and Ema have done here uh, Mark over the last 17 years, and obviously Mike and Ema over the last 14 and 10 years, respectively, um, is is beyond words, right? And um, I, I I take um, Mark's spot, right, with a ton of humility. Um, he has been unequivocally, in my opinion, and a lot of people's opinion, the best in the business, right, over the last 10 to 15 years. He's a phenomenal coach. He's won at a very high level. Um, and I have certainly a big job following his shoes. Well aware of that, um, but excited to give it a shot. Um, in, in, in his time, right, um, Mark has produced um, 30 All-Americans, 65 national team players from 22 different countries, 45 pros, including Patrick, 15 Elite Eights, 12 Final Fours, and of course, three national championships. It's a lot, right? It's a lot. Um, but in, in, in my choice to come here, and I almost said back here, right? Um, a lot of it was back here because it's back to the ACC, right? I coached um, at, at the University of Maryland for 10 years. I was the assistant men's coach, and I'd be remiss not to give Sasha Swarovski, right, has been in the last 20 years, arguably the best coach on the men's side, all right, with his three national championships. So I spent three years as his assistant on the men's side before seven years um, on the women's side as the head coach before moving to Tennessee and the SEC. Um, the ACC has been the best conference in college soccer, and I know if somehow some of my Tennessee people are watching this, they don't like to hear it, okay? <laughs> But I, I, I don't lie. Um, I unfortunately believed this uh, 12 days ago before I took this job, and I still believe it now, right? This league is special. And, uh, you know, the Pac-12, um, obviously phenomenal teams and schools out there. The SEC, um, same thing. 
um, but the ACC is just unique, and it's unique in terms of uh, the, the breadth of academic institutions, and we know in the sport of women's soccer, um, a lot of the best players are also very high-level students, and Michael mentioned before, our 3.7 GPA was the best GPA in the department this past fall, and so as a coach, you know, when you win a championship and, and you also win a GPA championship, um, that's a pretty darn good fall, and uh, I hope that uh, in the classroom we can continue that same success here at Florida State. Um, I did learn something last night um, when I was kind of perusing the website a little bit. Um, I knew that even though um, they're in the SEC, I knew that uh, Florida and Florida State didn't like each other. Um, <laughs> However, um, when I was looking um, and reading about the stadium and I saw an all-time attendance list, um, there are some really good teams, right? The UNC's and the Dukes and the Wakes and the Notre Dames, all the good schools, Maryland back in the day, um, all the good schools that have come through here. The top four attended games here in the history of this stadium, Florida and by a mile, right? <laughs> Not even close. Um, and so that, that gave me a little bit more insight into this place and, uh, and a little bit of the rivalry that exists between these two schools. Um, I'd be remiss not to thank the players and acknowledge the players that are here right now. Um, you know, they didn't see any of this coming, right? They, uh, they, they, they chose Florida State because they love Florida State. They chose Florida State because they... Um, believed in the soccer program um, because they believed in Mark, right? And uh, I understand that, right? And, and, and to not um, really grasp that and understand that and, 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 uh, and uh, have empathy for it would be naive and ignorant. And so um, as these kids continue to um, sort through and, and really, you know, the, the, this, this may sound a little bit uh, extreme, but, you know, it's a loss. You lose a, you lose a coach and, and in such sudden fashion, it's a loss, right? And these kids felt that and they experienced that. And now, now there's obviously closure with, with that in, in, in my appointment and me being here. And now here they are adjusting to their new lives. And uh, I have um, told them I'm not, I'm not a chess beater, right? I'm not that guy that's going to get in front of them and tell them how great I am. Um, however, I've tried and done my best to make them well aware how hard we're going to work and how good we're going to be. Right, to, to sit here and say I'm going to fully fill Mark Krikorian's shoes would once again be a little bit naive and a little bit ignorant. Um, but we're going to do our darnest to give it a shot. Um, we're going to win. Um, I believe we're going to win at a high level. And uh, I'm excited to continue to get to know these kids and get, get, get to a place where they are all... Um, you know, ready to move forward in their new lives, right? And, and, and unfortunately, that doesn't always happen overnight, right? And then, and then with, with Mike and Ema, they're not that dif different or, or, you know, in a different place than, than the players, right? Mike and Ema, um, you know, I don't know that they saw it coming either. Um, um, I hope I'm not kind of speaking out of turn when I say that, but, uh, you know, their worlds were, up, were turned upside down as well. Um, and so as they continue to process, I, Mike and Ema are phenomenal coaches. And as I've gotten to know them over the last week, um, it's, I've always known from the outside that they have had a big part in the success here. Um, and the more time I've spent with them, uh, the more evident it is um, what a big role each of those guys have played in the success of Florida State over the years. Um, and so uh, hopefully uh, the three of us can move forward together. Um, but I've assured our players that um, – if Mike and Ema uh, make the decision to move on and move elsewhere, um, obviously, you know, we won't like that, but we will unequivocally support it and be happy for them and wish them well, and we will put together one of the top staffs in the country, and I know that and I believe that. So, without further ado, um, any questions? Coach, you've obviously uh, you've obviously had success going to programs that haven't had a lot of success, and then kind of turn them around. How different is the challenge to go to a place that has had tremendous success? 
Yeah, and I think that was one of the things that drew me here, right? And I think I think there there, there are probably probably a lot of people out there that drew them away from here, right? Um, following this, but uh, it's just a different opportunity for me in my life, right? I, I've I've been. Um, the head coach now for almost 20 years and been in the college game for 25 years. I've, I've never faced a challenge like this. And uh, I believe in myself and I believe in my abilities. I believe in my ability to put together a staff um, and then trusting the players, right? They're, they're good players. And part of coaching is, is empowering kids, right? And uh, learning from kids and listening to kids and and, and, and handing it to, to them in some ways, right? And so as we continue this transition in terms of, right, our team and what our team is actu actually going to look like come, come the fall, I'll have a better idea of, okay, how much of my fingerprints and are going to be all over this team, right? Because you can make an argument that, okay, well, if we return almost everybody from a national championship and ACC championship team and two-thirds of the staff, right, well, my leadership is it almost becomes followership, if that's a word, um, you know, in, in, in this first time period, right? And so we're sifting through all of that right now. Um, um, I, I, you know, I, I will learn a lot. I will watch, watch a lot of game film over the summer. I've already started to do so. I've watched a lot of Florida State. I've followed Mark for a long time. I've followed this program for a, for a long time. And so when I sat in that room last Monday and met the team for the first time, um, I was able to address a lot of them individually and tell them my own experience, whether it's back in their club days or um, in, in their experience here at Florida State. So um, I'm excited for that challenge. As you said, it's a new challenge. Um, it's, you know, in some ways you can say, you know, someone may be in awe of that challenge, but I'm excited for it. Coach, welcome to Tallahassee. How much have you been able to talk to the girls beyond that introductory meeting, have consultations with them, mm -hmm. kind of figure out what their plans are, especially with the fact that they're about to disperse and go to all corners? Yep. Uh, the dispersing has taken place already. Um, they, uh, there, there may still be a kid or two in town here, but we met as a team last Monday night and then started the next morning with individual me meetings. So I was really, a couple of them had already left. They had finished their exams and, 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 and had gone home. Um, so I met with those kids over Zoom. But Tuesday and Wednesday um, was um, in our conference room all day, uh, both days just meeting with all the players individually, and then followed it up again um, at the end of the week with a team Zoom on Friday afternoon, and then just talking to them, right, texting, phone calls, and just staying in touch with them and allowing them to get to know me, right? They don't, a couple of them know me a little bit because I, from, from recruiting them when I was at Tennessee, but they don't, they don't really know me. And so relationships don't happen overnight. And so, and unfortunately they are gone, right? So that makes it a little bit challenging, but uh, that's okay. Um, they're they're going to give me that time and uh, we're going to get to know each other as best we can, as soon as we can. Coach, you mentioned Sasha um, earlier. What, what are some of the things that you learned from him as a young coach and things that maybe you carry through today? Yeah, so glad you asked that question. Um, you know, Sasha is um, probably the most intense coach I've ever um, been around. Um, you know, he, he, he wants to win, and he's really tough on his guys, really tough on his guys. And, uh, um, um you know, to where, uh, you know, some, some guys can't do it. They can't, it's, it's hard for them to play for a guy that, that, that is that tough. Until they really get to know Sash and they get to know how, how also soft he is and how loving he is and how supportive he is um, and how much humility he has. And so I, I, I think that's the biggest thing is, um, you know, he, he's not afraid. And, and I didn't know when I was working with him, I was – you know, 32, 33, 34, and um, which uh, still a young coach, you know. Um, but he, he, he would, you know, we would call it target practice, where he just kind of look around the room and just just pick off one guy at a time and be really tough on him. Um, however, he's a he's a smart guy and he always knows how to close the circle, right? And he always knows how to revisit a tough conversation. He always knows how to put his arm around a guy when necessary. Um, and then when he doesn't, when he 
whether it's making a mistake in a game plan, uh, making a mistake, you know, if he kind of gets out of line maybe with a referee on the sideline, he's the first one to grab the team the next day and apologize, right? Look the guys in the face and just say, hey, uh, I'm sorry, you guys, you guys deserve better than that. And, and so that side of humility from a guy who's that intense and wants to win that badly, that was an amazing experience for me. And it's allowed me to really allow myself to be vulnerable as a coach. And I tell our players all the time, right? Um, vulnerability is a strength, right? Sometimes people want to, again, I said it before, the pounding of the chest. And they think that, you know, talking tough guy is, is, is a real thing and it makes you strong. And if anything, that's just hot air to me, right? It's, it's allowing yourself, allowing you to be you, right? And uh, owning up to stuff when, when you're not proud of it. That's human. And, uh, um, that's vulnerability, and to me, at the end of the day, that is strength. Florida State obviously has had a lot of success with international players. Um, is there any difference in terms of that? Obviously, the recruiting is different, but in terms of just interactions and, and managing that that pro part of the program, because obviously, Coach Krikorian had a lot of success there. Yeah, I mean, in terms of, you know, the current players, no different. You know, they're, they're, they're people, right? They're soccer players. Um, obviously, their families are just a little bit further away. And so, but they've all gone through that acclimation process. And a lot of times with internationals, that's the biggest deal, right, is, okay, can, can you get them to stick, right? And can you get them into relationships and get them in a comfortable place where they learn to love the place and they learn to love their teammates and they want to stay? So thankfully, on my end, that, that hard work has been done. And so after that, it's just getting to know them and getting to know, hearing about their families and their lives back home and just relationship building. I'm hoping that we can continue to, to recruit internationally at a high level. Um, Mark has done so. A lot, a lot of college programs, both men's and women's, recruit internationally. What Mark has always done, and I remember talking to Dagny um, probably five, six years ago about some Iceland kids, and I, I, would, I would always ask her, would Mark take her? You know, that was the, me that was the measurement, right? Um, and she said to me, um, well, Mark won't take anyone unless they're, they've been, they've been um, with or very close to the full national team, right? And I said, okay, um, you know, that's, that's his benchmark. And Mark was able to recruit at that kind of level. So um, I hope we can do so, um, but we're going to scour this country for the best players in this country. There are a lot of really good players in this country. And um, I think over the years, whether it's been at the University of Maryland or now at Tennessee, um, we've recruited very well. And uh, I think I'm a relationship guy. I think I understand people well. And uh, I think I want the best for people. And, uh, you know, you go back to the Sasha, Sasha question is, um, you know, when, when guys leave his program, you know, they, they have um, almost a contract for life with him, right? He's a loyal guy, and he will take care of his guys, call him, and they need something. He's, he's going to do that. And I've, I've tried to steal a piece of that from him. Coach, uh, down here. Uh, hi, welcome to Tallahassee. Thank and uh, I know you said that you're still watching film, you're still learning what you can, but tactically, when you guys take the field in fall, what, what do you hope a Florida State fan that's maybe never seen your style before, what do you hope they see out of a Brian Penske team? Yeah, I think, again, it, 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 it's going go to come back to personnel, right? And, uh, you know, we, we, we all know, right, that we've, we've got some kids that are – you know, I want some time to, to, to get to know me and, and, and things like that. But this team, similar to what I was saying before, this team, they're, they're all – Mark recruits good players, and he recruits highly intelligent players, right, who have a very good natural feel for the game. So we're going to want to keep the ball um, for sure, and uh, just as, as they have in the past, um, and make teams chase us. Um, um, and that's, that's – that's, not easy, right? It's both technique, it's brain, and it's coaching and a structure to, to that. Um, and then one thing, and, and again, this is, I, I, I need to watch more tape and I need to look a little bit more um, statistically, but one thing that we really prided ourselves on the last couple of years at Tennessee was, um, was really making teams face their own goal, making backs face their own goal, putting pressure on backs, making them feel uneasy. Um, and I'm sure teams that have played against Florida State, they've probably faced their own goal plenty of times, but they've also 
been facing forward and just chasing the game, chasing the ball and not, not able to enjoy having the ball. So hopefully we can continue that, but hopefully also um, I can add some things that uh, make sure that teams are always stressed and they're always fearing um, giving up goals. And, and Florida State scored a lot of goals this year. I think actually our numbers were very similar, some, somewhere in the mid-60s range, right, which we were obviously very proud of at Tennessee. Um, so hopefully we can maintain that and continue to be a very much attacking-minded team. I, I like to attack, um, but I also I, I love the tactics of defending and putting together a structure that that uh, can prevent teams from doing the things that they like to do. So, um, but again, it starts with personnel and the makeup of our team, the makeup of our staff, who, who is with me, right? Who is with me and who are the guys in the room, the women in the room, and we're talking and we're discussing things. So, um, so some, still some unknowns there, um, but um, I don't want to stray too far from our, our, our ability to keep the ball, our ability to score goals, and then obviously, you know, um, we have phenomenal goalkeepers, and we have f some phenomenal kids in the back line. And um, as, as, as I think Florida State gave away 13 goals maybe this past fall, I want to say, 13, 14, um, which is great. But let's see if we can take another step and be even better. I think I know you worked um, with Jim Curry at Maryland, and I, and I didn't know how, what your relationship with Mr. Alford was before you started this process, and, and what kind of things did they do to sell you beyond what Florida State soccer is, mm -hmm. just in terms of the future? Yeah, so I um, knew Jim. Uh, Jim worked in compliance at the University of Maryland, and uh, I don't think I'd spoken to Jim since um, I forget who left Maryland first, but it was two, you know, not since 2011 or so. Um, and, uh, you know, like any um, good administrator does, um, when, when you have something like this happen, um, you call around, um, and you call around for help, right? That's, that's leadership right there, asking for help. Um, and uh, he called me to, to help with some names and run some names by me and, you know, see if there'd be any interest on my part. And, um, you know, I was, I was, I was pretty, not, not lukewarm. I was, I was actually, I was very noncommittal I'm on my part just because life was good right? A great team, a lot of players returning, families happy, all good, right? Um, so we had some conversations over the course of several weeks just about coaches, right? And, and what they were looking for. And um, I, I, I weighed in a little bit in my two cents. And, um, and then it got to, uh, to, to about 11 days ago. And they, you know, really said, okay, well, you know, regardless of what Brian's told us, um, we really want to have a, we want to make a run at him. And so um, when they kind of wanted to have a, an official right, conversation, they, they called um, Danny White, our athletic director, and um, told them they'd be reaching out. And that's when things got a little serious. And, and I didn't have any prior relationship with Michael Alford um, um, until that Friday afternoon um, Zoom with Michael and Jim and Cindy. Hey, Coach. Welcome to Tallahassee. Thank you. So I'm uh, just wondering what your overall impressions have been so far of the facilities and sort of the resources dedicated to, to the soccer program here. Yeah, I mean, phenomenal. Um, I have not been here since we played here in the fall of 2011 and uh, have not. We were, we were unfortunately one game away from coming here this past fall. We lost to Michigan in the Sweet 16. Otherwise, we would have been here and not Michigan. Um, but, so I haven't been here in a while, but like I said, I've watched a lot of games on TV. I remember, um, and it probably really angered my boss, who's, who's now a very good friend of mine. Um, he's at NC State now. He's my boss at Maryland. He traveled with us here, um, probably 08 or 09, um, Chris Boyer. And uh, we had Mark take us on a tour um, of the place. And we try, it was one of those, see Chris? see what Florida State has, see what we don't have kind of deals, right? And I think he just, he didn't talk, talk to me the rest of the trip, right? Because he just felt so set up, right? Um, I was like, you chose to come on the Florida State trip. We, we, you know. so, um, so none of it surprises me, right? Um, excited to be, um, that, that they'll be putting in a whole new playing surface, right? And in a video board, it's funny, 
Uh, my first time here was actually in 01. I was at Loyola College in Baltimore, and we came down to the Florida State tournament, played Patrick Baker's Florida State team in Miami. And I remember watching the Michigan game on the Internet back in November, I thought to myself, that scoreboard, I remember that from 2001. <laughs> that thing's got to go. Um, and thanks for, thankfully, it's gone. Um, and a new video board is going up, and uh, these kids will, will, will get to see themselves on a video board the way they deserve to see themselves. And, and then, obviously, the whole the office suite, and you go through there, and it's, it's, I walk through it there in awe. And it's, it's I, I wouldn't use the word intimidating, but it, it's maybe a, a little intimidating. All the jerseys on the wall, right? A lot of pros, a lot of national team players. But that, that, that's a big deal, which then comes back to me and my own kind of self-belief in trying to keep this going. Um, the ACC, right? This is, it's, it, it truly is. Like, I said it to Jenna. I said it to... Uh, Leilani, I said it to Jody Brown, I said it to a um, couple other kids in that room, I tried to recruit you. Some of the 23s that are verbally committed here, I tried to recruit you, but they wanted to go to the ACC, right? And, and I understand that. Um, the SEC is a phenomenal league, and the resources, you know, you talk about the resources here and the facilities, the resources and the facilities, I'm, I'm, I'm coming from a pretty blessed situation in terms of all of that um, at the University of Tennessee, all right? Big jump up from what I had been accustomed to um, at the University of Maryland. Um, so um, all pretty parallel here, right? Um, um, the difference, I'd say the biggest difference is obviously um, the success that this program has had. And then, like I said, um, being back in the ACC. Hey, Coach, thank you for taking the time. Welcome to Tallahassee. Thank I'm just you. wondering, throughout this entire process, was there ever a moment of question or just concern that you maybe felt just about Florida State as a university's commitment to Seminole soccer and what you had envisioned? Not one ounce. Not, and, you know, I, I, unfortunately, I ooze what I'm feeling, okay? So you'd be able to tell if I felt that, right? Um, not at all. Um, not at all. I, you know, uh, and actually, when, when Jim said that to me, hey, we're going to continue to support, I think I cut him off. I was just like, I don't need to hear that. that that's not a conversation, right? I, I trust that you're going to do it, and all good there. Um, uh, but one thing, that additional thing that really excited me about this place is um, the academic piece and the fact that uh, in the last six years, it's gone from mid-40s to a top-20 academic institution. That's a really big deal. Um, you know, when I got to Tennessee, they had a thing called Vol Vision 25, Vol Vision Top 25 to become a Top 25, and that drew, helped draw me to the University of Tennessee because, like I talked about, the the Dukes and you know the the Virginias and the Carolinas and so on and so forth. That's what we're recruiting against in the sport of women's soccer, and now I had no idea that. I was landing in a top 20 academic institution. It's a big, big deal, and that helps recruiting, you know, the, the, the best um, in this country. Hi, Coach. Welcome Hello. to Tallahassee. Thanks for taking the time. Um, a couple of days before you were announced as the uh, new coach at Florida State, several players from the current uh, roster entered the transfer portal. Um, what is your expectation about keeping some, some or all of those players? And um, do, you, do you want to? You know, what, is your, what is your feeling about that? Yeah, I appreciate the question. Um, yeah, and, and Jim and I talked throughout kind of that whole process, and he was very um, transparent. Um, before I, and literally on the day I was interviewing for the job, he was telling me that that, you know, could pop um, in terms of some kids going in the portal. And, and, and I get it, you know, I, I, I like uh, the changes that have happened in, in college athletics, right? There's a, there's a great debate out there, right? NIL, is this a good thing for college athletics? Is it not? Um, the transfer portal, right? Is it a good thing or is it not? Um, it is. It is, a, you know, and so these kids, right, and, and what's new this year is this May 1st deadline, right? The transfer portal started in 2018. There's never been any sort of date by which you have to go in the portal in order to 
be eligible for the fall, right? So these kids were up against that a little bit, right? And I think that was some of what was in their heads of, okay, wait a second. My coach has just left, right? It's all I've known here. He is a big piece of why I came here. He's been arguably the best in the business, and now he's gone. And now it's getting to be the last week of April. And yes, they may name a coach, but even if they do, I may not know who that individual is. I better get my name in just to protect me, right? But almost all of them have gone into the transfer portal with, uh, with, with a red triangle, um, which basically means they are closed, I guess they call it, where schools cannot contact them. And basically, they just they, 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 they wanted the comfort <laughs> of, of they wanted to own their own life in some ways, you know? And I understand that, right? I owned my own life when I chose to come here last week, right? So... Um, this program is amazing. This university is amazing. Our soccer program is going to continue to be amazing. And I believe um, that eventually, I like to think that eventually, they're going to get to that place, right? Um, and they're going to want to return and take their names out of the portal. But they've got to, they've, they've got to be at peace with that. And I've, I've, they've heard me say that, right? Uh, I've been very clear and open and honest and, you know, transparent. I want... Uh, I want them to want to be here. Um, I, I, I think they do know all right, that, that they love this place. They know that they love each other. Um, I think they just kind of got to, and we all do in life, right? We all got to all gotta make our decisions and, and own our stuff when we're ready to do it, all right? And I fully respect that for all of these kids. One, uh, one quick follow-up. Um, have you had a chance to talk to any of the uh, 2023 kids that have been recruited or yep. have? Um... Yeah, yep. all of them, all of them. Uh, good conversations. Uh, yes, no Zooms, all phone conversations. And I'm going to um, plan on uh, trying to get out to see them, uh, whether it's in the next couple weeks or some, sometime in June, depending upon where they are within the country. All right.